Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so um, I haven't really given much thought about what I'm talking about this time. <laughs> It's been a funny old week, really. Um, it's not really been all that long since I recorded the last one, which went out on Friday. Um, I mean, it's already gone out, so it's past Friday, obviously, but it's still the same week, so that should give you a sort of idea as to when it is that I'm filming this particular one. Um, but yeah, it's been like a really weird kind of week. Um, and as I, I think I mentioned in that one, this week was supposed to be my week off anyway, so I'm kind of, kind of almost sat here at a point where I'm like, I don't know when I'm going back to work. <laughs> and it's sort of getting, I mean, it, it hit me on and off throughout the week anyway, but I think today's really the day where it's kind of yeah, I, I have no idea when I'm going back to work and it's it's a really strange feeling to be in. I keep wanting to check um, the the online version of my schedule um, just to see, you know, where my shifts are next week. And then I have to keep reminding myself there aren't any. <laughs> that's, that's not something I can do. I mean, I think... I think I'm going to, at some point before I go to bed, um, actually just check because it's this, it's very surreal for me um, and I'm fairly certain I'm now uh, at the point um, that all my workmates were last week um, in, in that sort of very much feeling like it's, it's kind of surreal and, and kind of weird at this point um you know if, if things weren't went the way they were supposed to um I'd have gone yeah I had a, a really good week off from work um I managed to do a full edit of Broken for Use I've managed to do a full edit of Welcome to Mary's Vale I'm now doing a voice read edit of Broken Before Use, which is over the halfway mark at this point. Um, so that should be finished tomorrow, and then I'll be starting the Mary's Bell one. Um, I don't know how many more edits I'm going to do for Eurism. I usually, the other way I tend to usually work it with the voice edits is as long as I'm not making major changes each time I go through. Um, and it's sort of like minor changes and minor changes and minor changes. I mean, I'm not counting correcting things that I've missed, like I might have missed um, a word somewhere or had the wrong tense somewhere. I'm not I'm not counting those as changes. What I count as a change is anything that where I've altered the dialogue or altered the paragraph um, or added something or taken something away or you know anything which is an, a substantial change to what was there and not just a making sure the the t's are crossed and the i's are dots i's are dotted um as long as like you know all the changes that i'm sort of making like there, there aren't any changes um then i usually sort of do like a couple just to make sure that i haven't missed any uh basic mistakes um so yeah I, I usually usually i know that it's it's done when i don't need to make any changes and i haven't had to uh make any corrections uh, or at least i you know the the corrections that i've had to make are so minor that they have to have been the last ones um or you know so few and far between they have to have been the last ones so that's usually when i'm i'm satisfied with the voice read uh edits and the voice reader does help so much especially when it comes to like the little corrections because you can hear it you can hear where there is a mistake where there's a missing word when you might you might have just like skimmed over it um when you when i was doing like the the actual edits um 
so yeah, I, I love doing the voice. I mean, the, the thing, the thing I love most about doing the voice reader is you get to hear what it sounds like and it sounds good. <laughs> I know that, you know, that's me being all, I won't say arrogant about my own writing, but um, I do believe in my own writing. I do believe that I'm a good writer and you know, I have, because uh, one of the things I tend to do with my Kindle is I will um, link it up with one of my Bluetooth speakers and I will get the voice reader to, to read it, which is, doesn't always pronounce things correctly. So, you know, it's the same thing that I get with uh, when it's voice reading my own stuff. Um, some of my own words sound so weird <laughs> when it <laughs> pronounces it I mean some of it is exactly how I want it to sound and some of it I'm like yeah I'm gonna have to tell people how to pronounce that because <laughs> the voice reader doesn't work um that's the nice part um I've been re reasonably happy with uh how the the voice reader kind of reads some of the words I think the one that I do have kind of the major ish major ish the biggest issue with it at the moment is how my voice reader is pronouncing Obin's name. Um, it's spelled O B I N, Obin. <laughs> and I think it's it's not quite putting enough emphasis on the O, but you know, that's that's just how the, the voice reader is doing It's doing something which makes it sound weird. I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, so I would sort of, uh, let's see, I mean, this is going to be a vlog that's a bit all over the place, I think, because, as I said, I've not really thought about what I want to talk about for this one, and it's just, you know, any random thoughts that come into my head just because I'm sat down in front of the camera now. <laughs> um, so I think I've mentioned before that I originally wrote um, Broken Before Youth and Welcome to Mary's Vale, um, about 10 years ago at least um at this point i can't i can't remember exactly when i wrote them but i know the sort of rough rough time period i wrote them was about 10 years ago um so the character of Oban for me has existed for about 10 years and i actually got so amused in work um when a new crew member started his name was Oban, which is spelled O-B-A-N. Because <laughs> I was like, that is so close to this character's name. It's unreal. Um, and, you know, he has a very unusual name. Um, but but the, my, my former crewmate uh, had a very unusual name. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and here I was as a character with almost the exact same name. <laughs> and it just amused me so much like right up until the point where um he moved on from our store and then moved on from from the company I was just so amused like you know I have, it's one of those things where this character um, my character of Oban has like literally stuck in my head just as much because of this person I've worked with <laughs> as he has for his own reasons <laughs> so like hearing the voice reader not quite pronouncing it right, just, yeah, <laughs> it's getting to me, <laughs> it's making me laugh, um, and then the other sort of major one, and again, it's where it's putting the emphasis on the, um, the sounds of the words is Morella, so I pronounce it Morella, so anybody who is watching this, uh, who and if this is in the future and the books have been released and you guys are reading it wondering how to pronounce um it is Mra. um and again i think the voice reader is is not putting it's putting the emphasis in in just the wrong place for that one so it's not sounding quite right um but yeah Oban and Morella um are the two that the voice reader seems to be struggling with they're, all the other words it's kind of like you know they, they're pretty much spot on um, I'm not too worried about the Obin and Morella every single time with the voice read. I'm like, what are you doing, voice reader? What are you doing? <laughs> um, but then, like, the voice reader is weird anyway. It's like every time it does sake, so S-A-K-E, it always pronounces it sake. And I'm like, no. No, it's not. <laughs> I do have to, like, 
the amount of times I've stopped just to make sure I've actually got the right word there because it says sake instead of fake. And I'm like, what's wrong with the voice reader? And it's every, like, there are different voices um, for the voice reader. So sometimes I'll change the voice um, just because if I'm listening to the same one, like, over and over and over again, I do kind of get to the point where I'm not listening to it properly anymore. So usually every few uh, read-throughs, I will change which voice um, is actually reading it so that I'm, uh, again, <laughs> I'm more focused again. Um, but yeah, all of them pronounce sake as sake. And I'm like, why? <laughs> what was wrong with the person who did that? Uh, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I'm guessing it's like just an electronic voice all the way through just because of how bad it is. Um, and it won't do like the variations on the words um, either. So things like live and live, which are both spelt the same, will be pronounced. I think they're pronounced live. So again, you, you, it does mean that you have to sort of like stop for a second and make sure that you've got the right word there and then go, oh no, I've got the right word there. It's just the voice reader. But that's the point of using the voice reader is that it does get you to stop and check things. Um, read and read is, is another one where it's the same spelling, but it, I think it pronounces that one, I think it pronounces that one read? No, it pronounces that one read. Whichever one it is, is like the weird one for like most of the times that you want to use it. Um, so it's, it's always a bit like, I, I've gotten to the point now, certainly with those three words where I'm like, no, I, 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 I know what it's it's doing. It's it's annoying, but I, I do understand what it's doing there. Um, but yeah, like the, the there are some words that just can't pronounce whatsoever. And those are the ones that I will always stop and double check. I've got the word I actually want. I will even Google it every single time just just because I'm so paranoid that I've got the wrong word and, and then I'm like, oh no no I've got I've got the right word. It's just the voice reader is just annoying. <laughs> um but yeah, as as I sort of started this little tangent off, um I've done at least as much editing this week as I was initially planning to do. Um, I didn't think I would get through both of the weeks because like my original plan for this week was to get a tattoo done on Tuesday on my birthday. Um, so, you know, that, that tattoo would have taken up about three hours of my day. Um, two to three hours of my day. And that's not counting traveling there and traveling back. Um, I was also probably going to see my mum uh, for for lunch after the tattoo had been done. So, you know, that's like, like most of Tuesday would have been gone. I was originally supposed to see my dad and stepmom last weekend for a meal. So that's a good two or three hours of Sunday that would have just been gone. Um, so I, I didn't think that I would, I thought I'd get through the two to edit but I, I thought that was you know that would be that would be good that'd be really good progress so that's the progress that I was aiming to make was just to get through those two those two edits and um, then obviously because I you know after I got the tattoo I would be you know doing some tattoo maintenance so that would mean you know periodically stopping and, and making sure that I moisturized and added whatever I need to add to it to take care of, I mean I've, I've had tattoos before guys so I, I, I know how to take care of my tattoos when I've got new ones and it's like having a week off to do that that's absolutely perfect because it's going to give me the time to make sure that I'm properly um, doing it and properly setting aside the time to make sure it's done right and it's going you know hopefully going to heal fairly quickly um, because uh, you know I'm going to be really on top of it and you know don't want to go back to work I'm not going to have to worry about it so much Obviously, I didn't get the tattoo because, you know, lockdown. Um, I would have also spent time seeing from my friends this week. Um, there is a friend of mine who has her birthday three days before mine, so we usually end up doing something together at some point during the week uh, with our friends to, to mark that. Um, obviously, that, that can't happen now, although saying that, I have spent a lot more time this week talking online to my friends than I usually do. <laughs> I, I think we're, we're all sort of, you know, 
kind of missing the fact that you know that that was one of the times of the year where you know we do try to, to sort of meet up and there's not really a whole lot we can we can do about it right now so yeah there was so much like when I, I started at the beginning of the week where I was like yeah I want to definitely try and get through a full edit of, of both stories but I wasn't expecting to get much beyond that and I'm actually over 100 like bear in mind when I talk about book pages I'm referring to what they are on my original document which is a4 pages 12 point print <laughs> what they get turned into when they go to kindle it's like um it's like a uh, echo and hyena boy both gained about 100 pages when they uh, got transformed into kindle and i think it was just over 100 pages when echo got transformed into the paperback version so um you know you that's that's what we're talking about here we're talking you know about 250 pages once it goes on to kindle formatting and 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 whatnot else um and that's like standard print kindle formatting not like big print or or like tiny print that's like your standard print um kindle formatting so you know that's so when i'm when i'm saying like i'm about 110 pages into 150 odd page um for first voice read through of broken before use i'm very close to the end of it and it is a lot of uh, that i've had to to get through because as i said it's 12 point a four pages <laughs> it's it's a lot more than it sounds um when you put it like that I mean that's one of the reasons why the like the three edits I did through of Echo before re-releasing it on KDP was so exhausting because it was trying to get through a full-length novel in a 24-hour period um whilst you were looking for mistakes and making adjustments and corrections because I wanted to make sure that it was reading the way that I now envisaged it um because you know it was a proper second edition and everything uh so it's 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 yeah it's amazing that i've managed to get as much progress as i have but given the circumstances I, it's understandable that i've made as much progress as i have i'm also so happy with how um certainly with how broken before use is currently looking um I'm, you know, hoping that my first voice read through of uh, of um, Welcome to Marysville goes just as well. Um, I'm envisaging I'm probably going to be doing another couple of, of edit throughs um, before I'm ready to go. Yes, OK, they're, they're good for release now. Um, but I, yeah, I, I definitely think I'm making the right decision with releasing these two stories. Um, I can't wait to start properly promoting them. Um, so it's like the Dollmaker's Son, Broken Before Use and Welcome to Mary's Vale, and it is going to be book one and book two. Uh, <laughs> advertise, advertise, advertise. Um, I'm actually so glad that I've decided to do this whole like umbrella thing and have like a series arc name because it, it, I think it works better. I think even in terms of if I was only just going to do the four books of the series and not worry about the, the other three books that could be released under the same banner, I think it works to break it into two series arcs. Um, because uh, the second half of the series is quite disconnected from the storyline in the first half of the series, whereas the first half of the series definitely heavily relates to each other. Um, there, there is, it, yeah, it's, it's this, uh, <laughs> there is so much I can kind of say about it. I feel like I need to do like a whole vlog just, just on that. Um, I'm probably going to just be doing several more vlogs on that, but it's, um, like the title of the the arc, the Dollmaker's Son, um, it makes a lot of sense. Um, just because it that the kind of is a sense of there's more than one meaning, um, there's more than one uh, there, there's more to it than just than just you know the the it's the titular titular 
<laughs> I can't say the word titular. Um, so it's not it's not just about a titular character, although that the the I know which character is the titular Dollmaker's son. Um, it's it's not so much his story as it is the fact that he affects the the stories of everybody else around him. Really, um, yeah, it's. And, and as I said, it's not just like, yes, he's the titular Dollmaker's son, but he's probably not the only one that could have that title um, either. And, and yeah, there's just, it just works, it works on a conceptual level. It works um, on a thematic level. It's exciting. It's a very exciting time for me right now. Um, and I really need to get onto my, uh, <laughs> my cover artist to, uh, start mocking up a few bits and pieces ready for the, the books to, to be launched. Um, probably sooner rather than later. I mean, uh, if I keep going at the pace that I'm going at, at it, it, there's no reason they can't be out by the end of April. And now that I've said that, they're not going to be out by the end of April. <laughs> Just something will go wrong and they won't be out by the end of April. Um, but I, I feel like they're in a good position right now. So even if I'm at, at the point at the end of April where I've got the uh, the book files uploaded and I'm just waiting on the covers to be done, that's fine. I, I can live with that um, because I can, you know, start promoting um, with that. That's you know, I can I can sort of like set I you know set timelines and set set deadlines. Um, but again, it also all depends on how. The current set, current situation plays out a little bit as well. Um, I can see it being done by the end of April, provided I don't have to go back and do my my day job before the end of April. And as much as I would really love to just keep doing this this writer thing at the moment, if my day job starts back up, I will also be really really glad because as I said before I do absolutely love my day job um it, I'm in like I'm feeling so weird about not being able to do it at the moment I mean I know I do eventually someday want to be a full-time author but I also know that you know I'm not quite at that stage yet and the fact that I do enjoy my day job and I am going to miss my day job once I'm not able to do it and the sooner I can get back doing it you know the, the better as far as I'm concerned but I also know that there's no there's no way for me to know exactly at this point in time when that's going to happen so I might as well be doing everything I can at this moment in time to take advantage of the situation and get these books as ready as I can before I go back to work so that they can be released as soon as I'm ready to release them and you know that's really all I can do at this point in time and it's it's an odd position to be in it's a really odd position to be in because on the one hand I kind of want to be really excited about having this opportunity and on the other hand it's like I feel really weird about not doing my day job I should be coming back to work next week and I'm not and it's it's a very weird situation to, to sort of be in. I mean, as I said, you know, after I initially found out that news um, on Monday, I did get a little bit upset. And it's kind of the few times in this, this whole situation where I, I have gotten upset. Um, in fact, you know, the, the only other time I did sort of get upset in the last couple of weeks had nothing to do with the situation and everything to do with the fact that no one was going to help me with my insomnia. <laughs> sounds really stupid. Um, but uh, at the same time, kind of not as stupid as you think. Um, for those of you, for most of you who don't know, I have suffered from insomnia since I was a child. Um, and I've been wanting to get it looked into and investigated because I'm so sick and tired of being tired all the time for a while. The only reason I haven't is 
I have two chronic pain conditions and a lot of the last couple of years, not like not last year, last year, last year the pain was under control, as, as you guys know. But um, in recent years, my pain has been out of control. Um, I've also been very irregular when it comes to my bedtimes and when I've been getting up in the morning. But I, I like literally spent all of last year, like my pain was under control. I got my bedtimes as under control as I could get them. In fact, I'm continuing to maintain that now because that is the best thing you can do with insomnia. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, you know, with, with all that sort of like, so me basically being able to say, look, the, you know, my insomnia is not being caused by this. <laughs> Can we find out what is causing my insomnia, please? Um, first doctor I spoke to was very, I, I didn't like her attitude at all. She was, she was not a person I would want to have dealt with again. Unfortunately, I didn't. The next time I went in, I did deal with someone who was a little bit more sympathetic. Uh, she wrote off to neurology for me to see if there was any advice or anything that they could give. And last week, the letter basically came back saying, no, there isn't really anything we can do for you. Um, and uh, they did give me like the address of, or they, they did recommend I checked out this thing in Exeter. Now I live in Plymouth and I don't drive. <laughs> so Exeter is little bit of a stretch for for me to go to somewhere for what is essentially sleep counseling and it costs money and i was yeah I, yeah i got a little bit upset about that <laughs> and and bearing in mind this was also the day that um my mom's told me they were going into self-isolation this was also the day where um we found out that we were uh, going down to reduce hours because that was the plan at that point in time um and this was a day where a lot of stuff just all kind of compiled on top of each other and that was kind of the last the absolute last straw um so yeah that is that is a good summation of everything that has been going on and um in some ways i guess this is my round of march <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've just realised that this is coming out at the beginning of April, so I could I could justifiably say that this is my roundup of March, even though I haven't mentioned it at all in, in the entire rest of this video. Um, but yeah, th this is my summation of the situation as it is right now. I don't think I need to do a retrospective on March. I think this video has, has you know, done a pretty good job of kind of... I know just mostly focused on the last couple of weeks um, and actually mostly on my writing again <laughs> but like you know that's just I think how I want to sort of go yeah this is my roundup of March and that's how I'm going to title it so all of you wondering why when at what point I was going to mention this was going to be my roundup of March thank you for sticking around to the end of the video to find out <laughs> All right, okay, so this one's uh, getting on to be a bit of a long one. Um, so I will leave it here. Um, and as you can see, the light is fading outside. I waited until after my tumble had finished uh, before filming this one. So it's actually being filmed a lot later in the day than I would normally. It's not much really to fill my days with at the moment. So I was like, ah, oh, just get it done. Um, that way I can concentrate more on the editing tomorrow and, and not have to worry about it. All right, okay, so <laughs> I hope you guys have found this very mixed blog sort of interesting. Um, I hope you're interested to find out whatever else, whatever I'm going to bubble about next time, and I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.